Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can add behavior into your existing classes in C Sharp without touching them at all. I'm going to show you some code and I'm going to leave that code as it is and everything we do around it is what will add that behavior. Now this has actually been possible for years and we've kind of seen it before in this channel. However, in this video I'm going to show you how you can do it without any dependencies and because .NET 8 adds a very special feature, I found a way to use that feature in this concept to make it even cleaner. If you like our content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe. For more training, check out my courses on domtrain.com. Now, quick announcement before I move on, we have a brand new course on domtrain called Getting Started with Domain Driven Design. That has been one of the most requested topics for courses on domtrain and is finally here and is authored by the excellent educator and content creator Amikai Mantinmand. And in case you don't know, Amikai has his own YouTube channel, link in the description, give him a sub, but he's also a software engineer in Microsoft whose code powers technologies behind things like Microsoft Office, so literally hundreds of millions of users a month use the stuff he writes. He's an expert on the topic and he actually runs training like that in Microsoft as well, so you're getting the highest quality possible, which is what I wanted to offer with Domtrain in the first place. Now to celebrate the launch, I'd like to offer the first 500 of you a 20% discount code on the course, so use code DDD20 at checkout to claim it, and trust me when I say these do go quick, so if you want to buy it, buy it now. Also, if you buy this Getting Started DDD course, you will also get a special discount code when the deep dive and advanced versions of this DDD course are around, so you can double dip in discounts. All right, enough with that, back to the video. Okay, so let me show you what I have here. I have a single API, .NET 8 API. It doesn't really have anything, and it is sort of a weather API, but it's using a real weather service. So what I'm doing here is I have an HTTP client, I have an iWeather service, and then I have a weather endpoint. I'm getting a city, and I'm getting the current weather for a city. So if I go ahead and I just quickly run this, I have a request here on Postman, so I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And if I say, given the weather for London, as you can see, we're getting the weather for London. If I say Rome, I'm going to get Rome and so on and so forth. And all that actually goes to a real API behind the scenes. As you can see, the open weather map API, and that is what is giving you the weather. And you can see all that code over here. Very simply, we're using the HTTP client factory. We are calling that weather API and then getting back the weather and returning it. Now, the behavior we want to add is actually here, and it has to do in this case with resilience, because what happens if that service has a transient issue and for some reason it throws an exception or it just doesn't work, but we just want to retry for like n amount of times afterwards to hopefully try to get a response, and maybe let's do that for like three times. Now, I'm not going to use a NuGet package poly to add this retry policy because it's very simple and I don't want to do that, but more importantly, I don't want to add it directly here. Now, one thing I should point out is that if you're using poly, you can actually bake the retry policy in your HTTP client factory. I know that's a possibility. We're going to ignore that because I want to give you a generic solution for any type of problem. This is just one of those examples. Now, should the retry policy live directly here? In my opinion, no. This service should only know how to get the weather from the Open Weather Map API and just return it into something that I want to use in my service. So you wouldn't really add the retry policy directly here. What you do is you would have that in a different place. And how would you do that? Well, one way to do this is by creating a separate weather map service. So you can say resilient weather service. Now, this service doesn't know anything about Open Weather Map API or the specific implementation. All it knows is that it can get the weather some way. And we're going to see how. Now, the biggest mistake many people do when they try to do this sort of thing is actually extend the existing implementation. So say Open Weather Service and then override the methods and try to do it this way. In my opinion, this is a very bad idea because you're tying this into your Open Weather Service, which at this point, you might as well just smush them together doesn't really make a difference, you made a mess anyway. So what I like to do is actually create that resilient service and implement the interface, the same interface that the Open Weather Map service also implements. So completely agnostic of implementation. And I'm going to go ahead and just implement the one method I'm missing, and that is it. Now, ultimately, my goal here is to use the real Open Weather Map service and have all of my retry logic here. How can I do that? Well, let's just write some very, very basic retry logic. So first, I'm going to say catch any exception here. And you can be more specific and only retry exceptions that you think can be retried physically. Uh, but for this example, I'm just going to go the stupid way. And I'm going to say retry count equals zero, for example. Now, if we do have an exception, we can have a check that says that if retry count is less or equal 
or just less, depending on how you want to approach it. So like four or five, then retry count plus plus and, and retry it. The way I'm going to retry it is by actually having a start label here and saying go to start. Yes, you can do this with a loop. And yes, uh, you probably shouldn't use labels and go to's, but it's easier for me to read for this example and probably for the viewer as well, because you can just follow the flow like this. So that's why I'm doing it in your own applications, do whatever you want. And then I'm going to say throw in the end. And now in the try section, I want to use a real service. How do I do that? Well, I do that by actually, and that's very interesting, injecting the interface. So I'm still not really tied to the implementation here. I'm just going to say inject it. And then all I'm going to do here is say return await and then weather service. And that is it. And I know this probably looks very weird to you. But what we're trying to achieve here is to have this resilient weather service effectively decorate the real service. So the goal is that every time we resolve the iWeather service, because it's just an interface, we don't really know the implementation, all it's really going to happen behind the scenes is go from weather service to resilient weather service to open weather service. And this is what will be returned here. This will all make more sense as we go into the flow. Now, how would you do that before .NET 8? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Currently, the only thing you need to register is this singleton, and then you say iWeather service and then open weather map service. But if you want to do the resilient redirection, what you want to do is first say build a services dot add singleton and register the open weather map service on its own, which can be a bit tricky, but that's how it looks. And then to register the real iWeather service through the resilient one, you want to say builder.services.add singleton iWeather service and then use the get required service over here to get the open weather map service. But all that, and that's where the tricky thing is and hard to follow, is wrapped around the resilient weather service. So what's happening is when you resolve the iWeather service, what's going to happen is you're going to create the resilient one and you're going to resolve through the DI container the open weather map service. So the two redirections type of thing. And if I do that, I'm going to stick a few breakpoints here and also the open weather map service and the resilient one over here. And you're going to see exactly what's going on. So let's go ahead and just debug this and try to resolve um, the weather for some city. So let's go to Postman, call for Rome. And what do we hit first? Well, of course, we hit the uh, weather endpoint. And we have the weather service, which, as you can see by the type here, it's the resilient weather service. But this is all abstracted away. So it's the decorated version we're resolving here. And if I go into that, you're going to see that the one I'm resolving on the constructor is the open weather map service, the real one. So I can just have everything here. And then through the retry, sort of wrapper or decoration, I go into the real one, I get the weather, I return it, and happy days, I have the weather back. Now, arguably, this is a bit of a convoluted uh, solution, but that's how you would do this until .NET 7 if you did not use a library like Scrutor, which sort of simplifies that. And that would be fine. However, I found out a way to actually greatly simplify this in .NET so to show you how I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and comment everything out. Now, I had a few pet peeves with this implementation. Namely, you have to register the open weather map service on its own, which I'm not a fan of, because if you want to get a non-decorated version, then how do you... It was all a bit weird. So what you can do now in .NET 8 is you can use the KID services to redirect things. So what you can do is say builder.services.add singleton, and I can register the iWeather service and the original thing behind the scenes, which is the open weather map service. However, the one change I have to make is I want to turn this into a keyed singleton. So a singleton which has a special key. In this case, I'm just going to say OG as original service. And then what I'm going to do is say add singleton iWeather service resilient weather service. And that's all I'm going to have in my program.cs. The rest will happen in resilient weather service. Because what I want to do is just resolve this through the key. So I'm going to say from key services, OG. And I'm going to get the OG service, which is, if you remember, the weather map service. So if I need the decorated one, I don't need to specify a key. If I need the OG one, I can specify a key and I'm leveraging that to resolve it in here. So now if I run the application again, watch what happens. I'm going to go back here, call the endpoint. And as you're going to see, 
I still have the same resilient weather service being resolved here as the type. And when I go in, you're going to see I have the open weather map service and I'm getting the weather as expected and all that way simpler by using the keyed services. And the last thing I want to show you is how we can actually make it even simpler by just creating a simple extension method. The goal of that is to just make it very usable because ultimately you want to be able to say, for example, builder.services.add decorated singleton, for example, and then say something like from iWeather service, I want to have the decoration, which is the resilient weather service. And then from that, I want to go to the open weather map service, which is the real service. So I want to have something like this as my experience. How can I do that? Well, I'm going to go ahead and just comment this one out and create a new extensions class. So let's go ahead and do that, turn this into a static, and then I'm going to add a method. So it's going to be an add decorated singleton in this case. And I have the T service, the T decorated one or the one that I'm going to decorate with, and then the T final one, basically the destination. So once I have all that, I can say this I service collection, say services over here, and then I can have also a key because I think I'm going to need that the same way I had before. The implementation will look like this, so from service to final and from service to decoration, the final has the key. Same thing I had in the program.cs, but now here in a generic way. Now for this all to work, I need some restrictions. So this needs to be a class. This needs to be a class. It needs to be uh, an implementation of the service as well. So with all that here, this compiles and I can go back to program.cs and have the add decorated singleton and I can give it the same over here OG key. And now I say add decorated singleton from my weather service to resilient from a resilient to open weather service and add that behavior externally without touching my class. And if I do all that now, as you're going to see, if I go to Postman, call that again, same behavior as before. So I have the resilient service over here. I go in here, I get the open weather map service, and then I do my stuff and I return the weather back. So easy, so simple. You can now decorate your classes in a way, way nicer way. You don't have to bring an external package and it's very generic and very nice, especially with a kit service that just got added. I'm really curious to see what else I can do with kit services because the flexibility they allow, especially if you're building a library, is actually amazing. But for now, that's what I have for you. And I really, really want to know in the comments down below, what do you think about this? How are you doing decoration? And is that something you would use? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.